Pas du tout. Okay, well, you let me know when you think you're good, everybody. Yeah. We're at 5.31, and since we have KD with us and we're just missing the one and we are recording, do you guys want to kick it off? And if Maria jumps on, sure. she'll jump on. All right, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. And uh, first thing on the agenda would be to... I don't have it in front of me, but I'm assuming it's public comment. Yep. Any public comment? Hearing none, we'll move on to uh, approval of the minutes. Anyone want to make a motion to approve the minutes? I move that we approve the minutes, Ramsey. Okay. Matt, I'll second. Second slot. Okay. Uh, Motion is made and second to approve the minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Minutes approved. And on to the next item. So, like I said, I don't have my minutes in front of me, but uh, I mean, my calendar in front of me, but what are we up to next, Trevor? Yep. I think we're up to, we may have missed the approval of the agenda just as a housekeeping item. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Motion to approve the agenda. I so move. I'm not on. Okay, second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Okay. Now we're on to now the highlights the, of the meeting. <laughs> yeah. So we've got Katie Buckley with us from VLCT. She is the, and correct me if I get your title a little off here, the ARPA coordinator. It might be might be more to it than that, but it's okay. I could care less about my title. It's just the what I have to say, right? About yeah, the information. Right. So um, we can turn yeah. it right over to you if you're ready and we can sounds, launch into. Sounds great. Thank you. I have a slide deck, um, which I'm going to run through, which are the basics of ARPA. First of all, I want to thank you for having me tonight. It's my pleasure to be here. And I hope that uh, the information I share will, you'll find it helpful and valuable on your road ahead as you uh, start to gather and put and make decisions, uh, recommendations to uh the town manager and your select board or whatever your process is in your community. So um, I am going to screen share. My screens are in a little different order tonight. So it's out of sync here. Let's see if I'm sharing the right screen. Hopefully, do you see that opening slide? Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah we can Eight. see it. So let me just quickly go through um, what I'm going to cover. I'm going to give you some background, talk about what Vermont's share of ARPA is, uh, some final rule basics, spending, the standard allowance, uh, Vermont and nationally, public engagement year award, and the role of Vermont League of Cities and Towns in your regional planning commission. So the Amer American Rescue Plan Act is just about one year old. It, it was passed in March 11th of last year. Um, and of the many things it created, it created the State and Local Fiscal Recovery Fund, which we simply call ARPA. Its purpose is to help uh, governments respond to and recover from the pandemic. Uh, ARPA is implemented by the final rule, which was just issued in January, January 6th, and it contains sweeping changes from the interim final rule, which had been in effect from May of last year up until January 6th. Um, Vermont share. So Vermont is getting $1.25 billion in ARPA money. Uh, a little over $1 billion is going through the state of Vermont. And that is uh, half of it was allocated during the last legislative session and the remainder is being allocated during this session, actually, as we speak. Um, it's going out in the form of direct assistance to households, businesses, um, in the form of either direct assistance or grants um, and programs that are available to other eligible applicants. Uh, a little over 200 million is going directly to towns, cities, and villages throughout the state of Vermont like yours. Um, it works out to be about $300 per Vermonter. I don't know if you were involved in the early conversations when the money was first being discussed um, about it coming to the state and there was $121 million of county money, which because we don't have county form of government in the state of Vermont, that was all reallocated to uh, Vermont municipalities, which made your awards much larger comparatively to town, other town, cities, and villages throughout the country. 
Um, whoops, sorry, my, my mouse got a little away from me there. My apologies. Um, so you can see from the image on the right that um, 277 out of 278 towns uh, certified to accept their ARPA funds, which was quite remarkable. So a lot of towns took the leap into using federal dollars, many of whom have never used federal money before. Um, and so they agreed to accept this one-time funding. Um, and because those ARPA awards are larger, of those 277, 249 have awards greater than $100,000. So not relevant to your town, but it's interesting nonetheless. Um, so the final rule, as I mentioned, the final rule is um, what implements the state and uh, local fiscal recovery fund. Uh, it replaces the interim rule. It takes effect April 1st, but recipients can start using it now with no penalty. And we highly recommend that you do because the changes in it are uh, make it much more flexible. All funds must be obligated by December 31st, 2024 and extend, expended by December 31st, 2026. Uh, the legislative body is the ultimate arbiter of the funds. So um, there's no higher power or authority who has to approve your process or your spending. It's the legislative body in each community. Uh, all municipalities are required to do their reporting directly to Treasury. You have your grant agreement directly with Treasury. There's no intermediary of the state of Vermont has no oversight over your funding. They cannot tell you how to spend it. Uh, it is a relationship between you and the US Department of the Treasury and you will report to Treasury annually on by April 30th of each year starting this year, uh, next month, straight through 2027. So what you cannot spend the money on, um, and these are the changes between the interim final rule and the final rule. So you still cannot directly fund, and that word directly fund is a key word there, deposits into pension funds, contributions to reserve funds, or outstanding debt service. What you can now do with your ARPA funding, which you could not do before the final rule, is uh, if you uh, use the revenue loss approach, you can use your ARPA award as a grant match for any other type of grant, which includes non-federal match for other federal programs. So that's that's pretty big. That's why we love that change the most. So if there are, um, are additional funding sources that you're exploring for projects in your community, then you can use your ARPA funding as required grant match, which in a lot of instances that can be real money if it's a 20% match for say a, tra a V trans grant. Uh, what you can spend it on, this, um, this table makes my eyes uh, blur and it has. <laughs> for coming up on a year now. Um, really the most important expenditure category out of this entire table is revenue replacement. It's what that little green arrow is pointing at right there. Um, and it's where we're having everyone focus. So it's around revenue loss and revenue replacement. So treasury allows you to either calculate your revenue loss using this lovely formula here, or you can take the $10 million standard allowance, which means in Randolph's instance, your entire ARPA award can be claimed as lost revenue and spent on the provision of government services. Um, one point, and Trevor, this is probably the slide more meant for you than anyone else. <laughs> um, if you do take the standard allowance, you must make this election during your April 30th reporting of this year. So it has to be done. So when you're doing your reporting or whoever's doing the reporting for your town, um, make sure you point that out to them. So what does this really mean? Um, municipalities now, can spend their ARPA awards on the provision of government services, which is really uh, any service provided by a government. It doesn't mean it's something that you have had to do in the past or do do in the past, um, but it's something that whatever you choose to spend your funding on. Um, this can range from bolstering town operations to improving community gathering spaces, to supporting local nonprofits, buying equipment for firefighters, highway crews, roads, bridges. It's pretty much anything. Uh, ARPA in Vermont, what it looks like uh, on the ground here in Vermont, I get, uh, I've gotten literally thousands of inquiries <laughs> in my inbox um, on eligible uses. What can we spend our money on? Um, obviously more so when there were more restrictions under the interim rule, but now with the final rule, it's a lot, uh, the floodgates have kind of opened, but for munip municipal operations, seeing lots of inquiries in cybersecurity, IT upgrades, uh, websites, hybrid meetings, uh, equipment. I heard someone mention an owl earlier. It sounds like you guys are in good shape. Um, digitizing land records, making capital improvements to uh, municipally owned buildings, code improvements, 
that sort of stuff, uh, creating formal capital plans, uh, even down to seating administrative positions in towns um, for a town administrator, economic development coordinator, um, either for towns themselves or shared positions um, between more than one town. Um, to revitalize communities, I've gotten tons of inquiries on outdoor recreation. So improving parks, trails, green spaces, rec centers, that sort of stuff. Mm. Towns that are looking to advance diversity, equity, um, and inclusion work, high quality childcare, affordable housing, um, as I mentioned, community gathering spaces, nonprofits, the whole gamut, really. Uh, nationally, I think you guys might have seen this slide before. I looked at your minutes and saw that you um, had the NLC local action tracker there. That's an interesting one if you're interested in seeing what cities throughout the country are doing with their ARPA funds. Um, obviously, their scale is much different than we have here, but uh, many of the things that are being proposed in larger cities are scalable to Vermont. Um, public engagement. So unlike a lot of other federal funding, um, pieces of federal funding, there is no requirement for public engagement. However, it is implicit through the final, the interim rule and the final rule. Um, and it, it, we're seeing it in all shapes and sizes throughout the state, everything from uh, just a regularly warned item on a select board meeting agenda down to ARPA committees being formed, uh, websites being created, web pages on town websites um, to gather input and outreach platforms, people that are paying for platforms to help with gathering community input. So it's the full gamut, but we definitely are seeing lots of ARPA committees forming so much so that we um, created a little ARPA committee formation toolkit on our website and have a template for a formation document, but you guys are already formed. So I'm guessing you went through all of that already. Uh, your ARPA award, it's, it's some basic rules of the roads, try and stretch your ARPA dollars anywhere where you can find opportunity to leverage if you're making your list of priorities for spending, see where there um, are opportunities to add other funding. So if it's a, a capital project you're looking to do with ARPA funds, see if there are other funding sources available to reduce the amount that your taxpayers, um, the burden on them in terms of funding it. Use your existing tools. If you have, I'm sure you have a town plan, if you have any other plans, reports, studies that have been done, look to those as um, you are forming priorities and, and shaping how you're gonna have your public um, dialogue around money. And don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, there are a lot of towns that are looking to do direct assistance to households or direct assistance to businesses. And there is a lot, a lot, a lot of resources available um, on the state level. And an example right here is housing resources for Vermonters in need. We created a, a one pager that has links to all sorts of programs that you could direct your residents to everything from mortgage taxes, insurance assistance to rental assistance, uh, a whole variety of resources. So um, if, you, if you know of, uh, if you have direct assistance that you're looking to do, look to other agencies and organizations first, see if they do, are already doing it because they've already stood up the program and they already have the administration in place to do it. Um, so look to them and you could even use your funds to augment theirs. So our general framework is pretty simple. Prioritize good government governance, look to leverage your your ARPA assistance and look for um, long-term investments for your community. Uh, this is me, this is what I do, uh, ARPA assistance and coordination. I attend select board meetings, ARPA committee meetings, uh, have a lot of one-on-one -on -one phone calls, trainings with all sorts of people. I read and interpret all the regs that come through and then help simplify it for you folks. Um, I have a area of our website with a lot of resources and I am available, um, whatever you need, here I am. So as it relates to ARPA. I work very closely with the Regional Planning Commission. I believe you're a Two River Atacuichi, correct? Um, yes. So I work very closely uh, with the folks there who um, their lead folks for ARPA and the 11 RPCs throughout the state. We've been in um, right in lockstep with each other straight through this whole process to make sure that um, we provide the resources that you need as you move ahead with your funding. And that's my contact information for anybody who has any questions after the meeting. Um, don't hesitate to reach out, email, phone, whatever is best for you, and I will respond. So I'm going to stop screen sharing. And I know you had some questions. 
<laughs> sure, let's open it up to some questions. Anybody uh, got some questions for Katie? Yeah, this is Matt. I have a, a question. Just um, so that ten million dollar allowance is sort of allows us to say we had we had lost revenue and we can just claim this as lost revenue. Um, it seems that that's not the same thing as saying that we can then kind of do whatever we want with the money, right? When the money still has to be used in a way which meets the um, sort of the if, if not the letter, but at least the spirit of the uh, the intent um, of the funding. Yeah. Is that, is that right? Can we use it? Can we use it to um, redo all of our gravel roads so they're not somebody next year? Yes, you could. <laughs> yeah. We had to this year. I don't want. I mean, I don't want to, but I'm just asking. Right, and um, so the answer is yes. Um, you, there's a lot of things you can use it for, um, and that's where you have to uh, do that hard work of making your priority list. And really, the intent of the funding is forward facing for mm -hmm. investments for long term recovery. And so um, just, you know, putting gravel on your roads, I, I, it's not an investment for a long, for a long term recovery. If you're using that lens, um, you could use the money to do an analysis of the road to determine if it's a water issue on your road and do some rebuilding of roads so that you're not spending money in the future on it. So that's an investment in a, in a road if you were doing that. Um, but it's really, you know, this is where it's tough. The final rule came down, allowed pretty much every town, city, and village to take their entire ARPA award as revenue loss because mm -hmm. of that $10 million allowance. Um, and provision of government services is anything, right? Yeah. And so um, it becomes uh, how the select board wants to shape the funding, how the community wants to shape the funding, Mm -hmm. um, and, and each community's process for um, determining the, basically the lens that you're going to use to um, look at this money and prioritize spending of it. So, okay. And I is don't there, know. Is there ever any audit, um, follow up audit to say this money was used appropriately or, or not? Or if the select board yeah. decides they want to use it? It's, yeah. So, so, depending upon um, how the money is moved through the general ledger. Uh, if it's all run through and this year it'll trigger a single audit and the town will be required to, I'm going to guess um, just by the size of your town, Trevor, this might be a question for you that you probably have a single audit on a pretty regular basis, do you? We have had in recent years due to other grant funding yeah. sources, times we've had sort of through for mm -hmm. housing projects, for example. Yeah. I've pushed this up over the number a couple of times in the last five to seven years at least. So you'll probably have, probably have a regular annual audit in general. And then um, because of that, the uh, single audit is triggered when you have $750,000 of federal expenditure in a single year. And so you likely we'll have that and it will tr trigger a single audit, which then they'll audit the program itself. Thank you. So taking that standard allowance would give us a lot more options on how the money can be spent. Definitely. And Definitely. So. even if even if you wanted to spend in the other expenditure categories, I think there's 83 categories now that they've been expanded to. So let's say just hypothetically you wanted to do a sewer project in your community. You would you could still do the sewer project. You just report it all under the lost revenue category. So it just it provides much simpler reporting for when you're having to do it through the portal. Um, it's less documentation required, less tracking, less data collection, and less reporting. And obviously, whoever is the record keeper for your community with these funds, you're gonna wanna keep clear records, not only for treasury if you're ever to be audited, but also for your taxpayers. If someone said, hey, I wanna know how the money was spent, you wanna be able to demonstrate to them, here's, here's how much we got, here's what we spent it on. So it sounds like uh, good news, actually. We could do a lot of different things. So again, you're right. You'd have to prioritize uh, what the important things are for long-term helping the community. It's, it, you know, there was- Our job, right? It's almost yeah. worse for folks like you who have to take this big universe, universe of possibility and winnow it down to a group of suggestions, right? When you had more restrictions on the money, it forced you into 
okay. a thinking. <laughs> now it's like, it, it's a free for all. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a blessing and a curse all at the same time, but to glass half full it, yes, it is much more, <laughs> you have much more opportunity. In terms of the sort of long-term investment conversation, we've, we've talked about, could we create a loan fund, low or no interest loan for, um, and that money would get paid back, right? Mm -hmm. So we're wondering if that runs up against the, the end of 26 deadline to spend it, quote unquote, all. But if we created something like that, there would be a recurrence of that money. You know what I mean? You and, see a conflict there? Um so if you directly fund a loan program, um, there are some funky rules around loan programs with ARPA because of the um, must be spent by December 31st, 2026. And really the workaround is bringing it through your general fund um, and having it cover general fund expenses like salary and payroll, and then using the general fund money that's been freed up to then fund your loan program. So you're using unrestricted general fund dollars, not federal money as the basis for the loan program. Therefore, there's no more you know, timeline, all, all of that other federal characters off the money. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And it feels wrong. <laughs> okay, let's just be blunt here. Um, it, it feels completely wrong to do something like that, but it in larger budgets, it's done all the time where one funding source is swapped in for another and then that other, whatever's freed up is spent on something else. Thanks. You're welcome. Are, are there any guidelines around obligation generally in terms of what to be thinking of in terms of how to obligate the money by the end of 2024? Is it just as simple as sort of identifying and adopting some kind of list of projects or programs or, or does it need to be something additional or do we not even know that yet because we're you know, so early on the curve? I think it's going to um, become clearer after this reporting period. So if you claim your entire award as lost revenue, then it might mean that all of that runs through your books this year. So it ends up being all spent this year, <laughs> right? So yeah. the obligation piece and even the spending piece of tw those two dates of 2024 and 2026 might end up becoming a moot point depending upon how treasury treats all the lost revenue. We're also waiting to see if uniform guidance is at play for it. So there's still, there are still a lot of unknowns. Um, and we're just sort of <laughs> take every day as it comes and wait for the next piece of guidance to come and the next clarification. Um, and so we're hoping that in the next couple of weeks, especially gearing up for this reporting that is one month away, the due date that we'll get more clarity and information on that. Katie, this is Matt again. Um, in talking to residents in Randolph for like asking for suggestions on projects and things they'd like to see, a number of people have brought up some interesting projects, some interesting ideas, but they're really just very conceptual at this point. And so I'll, I'll, um, uh, I'll make up a hypothetical one. This is not one I really got. But somebody wants to put in a trampoline park in Randolph. I think that kind of recreational activity would be great. Um, um, but there's not even a concept available. And so for projects that are really just sort of theoretical at this point, but but maybe could get a lot of support. Is there, a um, what are other towns and other places doing to um, move these projects along so that the funds could be obligated by 2024? Or, or does the, is this funding really only suitable for for projects like that that have, have gotten through at least the conceptual design phase? It's up to the town. It's really up to your community how, um, you know, think of it as standing up a grant program, right? You have to, you have to come up with what the program is, what's, what will be eligible, what won't be eligible, what's your application process, what's your selection process. Um, it, it's a, it's a fair amount of work to, to stand up a program and then fund local projects. Um, I, you know, you might look to existing 
programs at the state level to see how they're structured and then mock their structure um, so that applicants know how much funding is available, what, what they're, sorry, my family is having a big conversation in the background through the door. <laughs> they usually know to be quiet, but I, I'm going to think, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> um, I just want to know who I has the dog. I apologize for that smart. interruption. My life is happening in the background. <laughs> it's the dog. Um, so it's, you know, have you gotten, and my apologies, I don't know, when you were formed by the select board, I would imagine, correct? Yes. Correct. Did you have a formation document where you were given a charge? It, there was a scope of work in, in one of the, the there was a, a memo we put together. There was a scope of work that was adopted as part of that. It set out some general themes. Excellent. Um, so yeah, they weren't the explicit like how are we going to get into the nitty gritty and and you know rank the um, you know the trampoline park against the Ferris wheel or anything like that. But they did sort of set aside you know one of the board's goals was if folks will recall was to try to figure out ways to deploy the funds where there's a broad based impact um, yeah. so that each corner of town saw some level of forward looking benefit from the use of these funds. So there were things like that the some of the transparency and accountability pieces were baked into that scope of work um, as well. So it was a one pager, but it did set out sort of like a little mini charter if you, if you think of it that way. Yep, and you can look at the tenants of ARPA as your yep. framework if you want it. Like I, I love, personally, I love the trampoline park idea. What fun, right? However, is that gonna bring the maximum value and benefit to your residents? Does it serve all residents? Who does it exclude in the process? You know, how, who um, does it help to benefit those who were disproportionately impacted by COVID, right? A lot of times that's low income people. Um, so if you can use the lens of ARPA as you're making your decisions around what fund and what not to fund, um, that's super helpful. You're, you know, I, I lean back into your town plan. That one, the town plan helps to, again, narrow the fields, what are your priorities? Pick those areas, is it, you know, is something that's being proposed, does it follow tenants in our front? Yep, check, 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 check. Um, is it in compliance with our town plan? Check, you know, you start to put in criteria that helps you narrow and really at the end, you want such a good process so that everyone who is funded understands why they were funded and those more importantly who were not funded they might be disappointed, but they absolutely know why they were told no. And it's that that simple. So, um, and there, I wish I could tell you there's a one size fits all approach. There isn't, every town has different priorities and are picking what is most important to them. And, um, you know, uh, Westford is a town that went through a rubric of decision-making. So you might reach out to them as an example um, or for to see if they would share their rubric. Uh, I want to say Brandon may have also done a rubric. I believe Barry City is working through the same. Have you, um, where are you in your process? Have you started? Um, like, is this, are you, is this like your second or third meeting? So you're just meeting? Third meeting, yeah. Third oh, so meeting. Starting. Okay. Right on, yeah. Last meeting, we discussed kind of a very broad intake form online, or and and we didn't really get into the selection process after, but kind of casting a wide net early it was pretty pretty good consensus. Mm -hmm. um, have you? So I have uh, a question. Yeah. Are these so? Communities that have spent the money so far, are very they putting few. this to like a, okay, so it's very few, very right? Few. Is, any, <laughs> yeah. is, anybody, is anybody contemplating a list and then putting that to a town-wide vote? Uh, not that I know of. Not that I know of. Okay. Only The only reason I'm asking is because we have a little bit of time here. So as we select projects, you know, maybe it's what I'm thinking is, is the committee kind of puts some projects forward, but in order to maybe make sure that everybody feels like they've been treated equally. If you put it to a town-wide vote, then it's either yay or nay, and that's what won. So, uh, I mean, I'm just throwing it out there. If that's a bit, has anybody talked about anything like that yet? 
Um, not, uh, not their entire project list. We have had in uh, at this past town meeting, we had a couple of towns, I wanna say that put articles on their warning about using their ARPA funds to create a, basically an ARPA fund, you know, yeah, so okay. that the, it's reserved, set aside by the voters um, and is a reserve fund. So it's, they, it can be rolled over year after year. So if the funds are brought into your general fund and become surplus, they're not used in any way that surplus is generally used, but that it's set aside for a, a, a specific purpose. But in terms of an actual project, no, we didn't see anything um, on the town meeting warnings, but everybody, everybody's very early in their process. Even if our upper committees have been meeting um, and forming ideas, we haven't heard or seen a lot of spending beyond, uh, you know, smaller necessary, like digitizing land records. We have yeah, a lot digitizing of records, right. I, I've heard yeah. a bunch of, you know, a bunch of towns are doing that. Yeah. And yeah. That, and so that makes a lot of sense. Projects that, that they're having to do anyway, hybrid meeting equipment, you all have had to do some form of hybrid meeting for the last couple of years. So now you can either retroactively fund that equipment that you already bought um, or uh, improve upon any systems you've started to put in place to make them better if you're, now that you have money. Alrighty, anybody else, any questions? Uh, Perry. Jerry, can you see me? Yeah, you're on the own, Gary. I can hear you. Did, you. did you get that information I sent out last night? Yes, I did. And where the money goes? Yes, I did. What do you think? I don't think that's relative to this meeting. What do you think is relative to this meeting? Um, yes. you, I got it last. I got it last night, Gary, and you know it's it's not something I am prepared to discuss at this meeting tonight. It's not on the agenda. I didn't get the agenda. Why didn't I get the agenda? I'm not really sure. It was posted on. But the, this is an ARPA meeting, Gary. This is not. A, this is not an energy meeting. It was posted on the town website where we're supposed. To, I don't know that this is the best use of our time. I have looked at the town website many, many times. You know, I, I have never found walk, it. A, a walk you right. So I'll walk you right to it right now, Gary. I town advisory you, I committees you. go to the bottom because we can't change the order. You. Apparently, you don't. ARPA committee agendas and minutes. ARPA committee agenda with the links. Okay. How would I know that? That's where we've been posting everything. It's where we. How would I know that? that? You are on right, the let's energy let's table this and... How would I know that? Hmm. I've looked on the town website for relevant information in the past and never found it. Is this okay, well, I, I think I, I'm I'm going to call the plug, pull the plug on this conversation that's not relevant to this meeting right now. I, I have okay. a question for Katie. Fire away. Um, I'm I'm trying. I was actually trying to search on you. I've seen it before. But um, there seem to be like, I don't know, maybe five to eight broad categories of types of spending, yep. like recreation, health care. I was just looking around for it. I don't know if you can rattle off sort of the, Hang on a minute. the big five or the big eight or what. what I, it's just thinking of bins to, to, you know, conceptualize where this money could go. So give me just a sec. Yeah, you probably know where to click. I've been clicking away, yeah. not finding it. Unfortunately. Um, let me just try and... Um, I'm going to, I'm going to crudely screen share if that's okay. Yep. Uh, if I can... Okay. Are you able to see which actually hang on you? I'm on the wrong screen here. Nope, oh, sorry. I don't know why I'm still in slide presentation mode. We try a different approach. Um, on our website, we do have that. Um, and I'm gonna get all ARPA nerdy on you here. It's the, um, it's the expenditure categories in the co compliance and reporting guidance. Um, I, I wonder if I can drop the link in the chat, that might be more helpful. Yeah, great. Anybody who's online who wants to pull it up. 
um, and I will try and screen share now for those of you who can't. Sorry. Okay. So can you see that screen? Yeah. Okay, these yes. are all of the expenditure categories that if you wanted to use these as your rules of the road for helping to make your selections or guide your, your recommendations for applications eligible uses, these are the ARPA eligible uses. There's 83 in total, um, but there are public health, negative economic impacts, um, public health, negative economic impact, public sector capacity, premium pay, infrastructure, which is water, sewer, and broadband, um, and then revenue replacement. So those are the broad sort of strokes. Um, and, and when you dig deeper into those, you'll see all the different types of eligible uses within those categories, and it might help you shape what you're um, looking to do. Oh, I know what I wanted to ask you. Um, was, have you guys gone through Vermont um, Council on Rural Development Community Visit? I have. We like, were part of, well, we were part of a, a process here three years ago okay. with, with John Copan and Paul Costello. I'm in contact with them. Okay. I wasn't sure if the town itself had gone through and then you would have been left with an action plan. That's another good plan that could help shape some thinking. Um, but Perry, you'd mentioned having, uh, bringing it to a townwide vote. You could also just hold a big um, townwide meeting that's not a town meeting with a vote and do it informally in that way. Um, uh, put, yeah, that's a, pro that's a process that, you know, we're quite familiar with because we did, have, we did do this session with um, Paul Costello and yeah. John Copans a few years yeah. back. And so, uh, you know, we're pretty familiar with that format. And I think that might be a good way to boot this down the road. We're just not quite sure where we need sure. to be just yet, no, but I that's a conversation yeah. I think we should have. Yeah, as I've, I've actually done that approach and it's pretty effective. It's more, you know, obviously informal, everybody gets dots and sticks them up there, but it's a great way to, to have your public help you move in a certain direction. And there you have buy-in. Um, but these are certainly categories um, for you to consider if you're interested. Michael, I think Great. you're the one who asked about the, the categories. Um, Does it? Where, where can I get access to that, Katie? Um, it is on the Vermont League of Cities and Towns website. Okay, great. Specifically on the um, reporting and compliance, um, I just dropped the link in the chat. I don't know if somebody can share that with you as well. I'm going to stop. That would be good if somebody could. And I think I just, I know you had some other questions. I just want to make sure that I get to them. I looked at your minutes from your last meeting and saw them. So I just want to make sure that um, we also have some resources for public engagement on our website. If you're interested in looking at any of those, um, how to consider full system costs and timing for the use of funds, programmatic use that may require additional time and resources to be operational. As I said, how you run it through your general funds can buy you time. Revolving loan fund, we hit that one. Uh, business focused, we hit that one, I think, as well. Um, broad benefit to Randolph, I think we hit that one as well. Um, have you have you reached out to any of your neighboring communities? The energy committee. Yes. Yes. This isn't your meeting. Let let the other committee members. She talk. asked her question. What if she wasn't asking you? You're being disruptive. Let the meeting occur. I am a part of this meeting. You are not on the. Committee. No, you're not, Gary. It I'm sorry, but you're, this is you're not on this committee. Out. It all got screwed up in your office. Classy, Gary. Classy. What? Let us have the meeting, Gary. We can talk after. I will welcome that. Okay, we can proceed. Great, thanks. Sorry um, about the disruption. That's okay. 
Um, I just so you know, I worked for um, a small town in southern Vermont, which was my old town for almost ten years. So <laughs> I'm well used to uh, uh, public process. So I appreciate being a part of it and understand it. It's the Vermont um, way. It is the Vermont way. <laughs> I love it. Um, so what, what other questions do you have and how can I be most helpful? Um, I, you know, I know there's, you know, there's federal money also coming down uh, for schools and infrastructure and, and other. So just thinking about, you know, avoiding redundancy and overlap. I, mean, I don't know if you can sort of lay the land on what other dedicated funding is going to be spilling on to us? So there's quite a bit of money coming through the bipartisan infrastructure law, all the, um, through Agency of Transportation, uh, Agency of Natural Resources, and the Public Service Department. So broadband, um, clean water uh, through ANR, and then uh, a lot of existing BTRANS programs will get additional funding, but there's 26 new programs that they're going to have. I don't know yet um, of those, which ones will have towns as eligible applicants. So that hasn't fully been fleshed out yet. So we're waiting on that to see exactly what that funding is going to look like. But um, there are a lot of existing programs that have gotten additional funds, obviously with all of the rise of the escalation in construction costs a lot of those funds will get eaten up just through um, inflation. Uh, but still your ARPA funds can leverage those funds. So if, as you're going through, you're making priority lists of projects that are important to your community and you start to see a priority list coming up, each one of those that are on the list, see if it is the type of project for which you can leverage other funding. And if so, um, see what programs are available. And you can either work with your RPC you can work with me, you can work with both of us. Um, I, I'm happy to work with all of you. I'm happy to work with Trevor. Um, and really the goal of all of this exercise is for you to not leave one ARPA penny on the table and us not to leave any federal dollars sitting um, unspent. And so if there was ever a time to do a project, now's the moment. <laughs> like if funding was ever a problem, you have grant match right now sitting in your coffers. Um, half of your award is, is in the bank and the other half will arrive this summer. I think 1.3 million of, was your ARPA award. Yes. Yeah. 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 One four. So it's, it's not enough money to solve all your problems, but boy, it's um, a pretty good amount of money to just have land in your laps. Um, so I, I say this and it makes most people cringe when I say it, but if you have a significant project that you were looking to do, now's never a better time to take debt because of interest rates and because of all that other federal funding, it minimizes the amount of bond or other form of debt that you would have to take. Um, it's just, there's a lot of money out there right now, a lot of money flowing through and a lot of money coming to Vermont, especially because of our congressional delegation. They've brought a lot of, lot of additional funds just because of their positions on the federal level, so. How do we keep track of what's being planned by, by the different groups like the school system, for instance, in terms of ventilation for, if we decide, if, if we thought that ventilation was an important thing in public buildings, mm -hmm. how, how, how would we know what grants or mm -hmm. monies they were coming in with so that we wouldn't go there or, or might go there because that might be our, our priority too, to complete a project. Mm -hmm. Schools typically get separate funding than municipalities, generally speaking. So like you wouldn't, you would rarely compete for the same pot of funds. And so um, there, there is a piece of legislation going through the state house right now. It is um, the bill number is H518 and it is uh, it would, the primary purpose of the bill is fuel switching for municipally owned buildings. However, um, the funds could be used for a complete ventilation project of which fuel switching is part of it. There'll be $48 million potentially of funding that could come out of it. So if you had a town office project or a library project or some other municipally owned building, you could use your ARPA funding with that funding, apply for that funding and you could get more of your project paid for. It really depends upon how aggressively your town 
Chase's grant funding as a, uh, another source of funding to do local projects. And so there's, there's not a single source. You sort of figure out what your project might be. And then you would look and say, well, what types of funding are available for this type of project? So we're looking to do it, uh, you know, if you were to say, we're looking to do a town office renovation project, you might look to those funding sources. And honestly, you can ask me. I'm, this is like the one area that's my bailiwick is federal funding, especially mm -hmm. state programs, but federal funding that runs through the state of Vermont. Mainly because I've either used it <laughs> as a grantee or I've administered it at the state. So I have, I love grant money. Other well, I think we have, a, I think we have a lot of projects, you know, yes. that are out there that we need to really start honing in on here. And, um, you yep. know, we've, you know, recently, okay, well, we just did our sewer water facility over here in the village. We've got right now, I think the biggest thing here is infrastructure roads. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there is, there could be some water sewer, you know, additions added on. So I think it's a matter of, you know, this committee's charge is to kind of figure out what fits the bill here and what we're going to get our biggest bang for our buck here and to figure out what other sources we can utilize and leverage to be able to use the money to, as you said, to cover part of the grant match. Yep. Yep. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Are we good with Katie for now? <laughs> and I say for now, because I feel we'll probably be in touch with you again. Yeah, I hope you will. I hope you will. All right. That's, that's what I'm here for all day. Okay. Every day. Well, this is my full-time job. I talk about well, this, I read about it and I learn about it. So great. consider me your resource. All righty. Okay. All right. So thank you very much. You're very welcome. And if All you right. need me to ever come back or you need anything, just give a holler. Well, I'm sure Trevor has your direct number. He does. <laughs> he's right, he's the guy. Pleasure. All right. Thank you so much. You folks have a great night and thanks for having me. All right. Thank me. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So any old business to discuss? I just want to real quickly, there was a reference to IIJA was one of the acronyms in the presentation when it was about the non-federal um, matching funds. That's the, it's an acronym for what's essentially become known as the infrastructure bill. I sat in on a webinar about that today too. So when you're thinking okay. about potential project uses, we could use it for that. They're still a little ways away on that one in terms of how funds are going to flow. Um, but that's what that refers to. And that can be everything from surface transportation to bike ped facilities to, um, uh, you know, transit types of projects. There's a whole bunch of stuff in the broadbands included in there, for example. So there's quite a bit of overlap between the two, but we're still a little ways off, I think, in terms of knowing how that money will flow. So whether or not you want to consider setting that aside to match some other project or just leaving the possibility open. Um, I think we'll have to keep an eye on that as it as it advances, but um, that is another potential piece of funds to stretch those dollars. Uh, I don't know what the BIL acronym stood for. I'll have to look that one up. But have we decided if we're going to take that ten million dollars standard deduction? It's on the agenda for the next board meeting, which is April fourteenth. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was thinking it was due tomorrow. No, I'm a, yeah, I'm a month off. Okay, yeah. good. So we have a, a month to decide that. Yeah, okay. and then one of the things to get through this kind of conversation with Katie, so we understood um, what the standard allowance really meant. It, was it as free as it seemed initially? Now I think we have some guidance on that, in addition to some additional guidance from Treasury that that mm -hmm. makes it seem like it is. It, it, well, it could be. Um, it depends on sort of what we put up for some guardrails about the use. Yeah, particularly that long-term. I guess piece. my initial thoughts on that would be, it would be good to do it, but we should still follow the ARPA guidelines very closely and not go too far out yeah. of bounds. I think mm -hmm. that would be wise. Yeah. But we have time to think about that, but that that's just initial thinking, so. And it's one of the things where it makes mm -hmm. sense to claim the standard allowance because you can still use it in the ways, you know, when you even think back to the interim rule, if that, if that ended up being how we wanted to use the funds, we're still okay because it allows for, for those possibilities as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think it is, 
something I didn't think about that she mentioned is that if you do just open it up completely, it's going to be a, a hornet's nest of, of projects. So I think it would be important to follow the original guidelines unless we get something that is really very important identified. So. It, and Treasury did layer on in some of their stuff and, and Katie kind of I think referenced it, at least in some sense, we talked about it before, is some of the prior, priority areas for use of fund and they're more thematic equity focused, community empowering results and evidence focused and worker centered. Um, and so there's, I think some broad interpretation in that, but that's when we, we think of how to layer on the different considerations. I, I don't know how that becomes a metric and a rubric, but I'm sure there's, we can either figure one out or steal one from somewhere, I'm guessing. Yeah, well, what town did she say developed a rubric that they went through? That would be useful to get a copy of that. Westford and Brandon, she mentioned, and that Barry was working on one. Right. Yeah. I'm interested to look at some of those only i mean westford's a some similar type community i'd like to see what they're doing brandon same kind of thing i think it'd be nice to know what they're what they're thinking um i'm kind of leaning towards a little bit towards you know possibly a similar to what we did with the r3 meeting process where you know you get everybody in a room you put down some things some things stick to the wall you know you to get a townwide vote on it. I think that was a, a good way to get a lot of input um, and then just see what those kind of things look like and whether or not they, you know, what they qualify for. I'm, I'm kind of wanting to make sure that when we do this, you know, we've, we've included, you know, everybody in the community and everybody feels comfortable. And that's why I asked about, you know, a townwide vote process or something along that line. Um, you know, I don't want to be, you know, hearing stories about, well, you know, my project wasn't considered, whereas, you know, in the R3 process, you know, the people who were there got a vote. And I think that's pretty important to, you know, make sure that we've completed our task here and the recommendations and what we do with the money is spent broadly. So, and that was one of the initial conversations with the select board. It does seem like it would be pretty important though to have some, to, to, to put out there some basic framework and also to let, um, the whole community know wh which part of the community is actually included in these funds because I think it'd be really easy to focus on a Randolph project that doesn't affect Randolph Center or what is East Randolph, Randolph Center, and Randolph uh, the Central. Right. Or whatever. I I totally agree with you on that, and that's why I kind of think you know we we need to say okay these are the things that could be eligible projects. Yeah. Let everybody think about that, and then possibly you know put your project together. And then, you know, maybe we just have a townwide meeting and say, okay, you know, this is what came out of this. And so, you know, let's, let's brainstorm a little bit and see where this goes from here. So, I, you know, I don't think we have to be in a big, terrible hurry to do this. I mean, it sounds like we've got some time, but I want to make sure that when we do this, it's well thought through. Yeah. And, and just process wise, um, the, whatever intake form would happen prior to the big get together. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know if there'd be a sharing out of like, look at all these great ideas, you know, not with names attached or anything, but just a sharing yeah, I, out of that kind of too. I could see it going both ways. I could see us soliciting ideas and then having those ideas come up in a meeting and then having the meeting and see if any other ideas come about. And then, you know, maybe, you know, in that R3 process, you know, we had time to, gather that information and then come back and say, okay, these are the things let's, these are the things we talked about in the last meeting here, they are on the wall again. Um, you know, now do we vote and, you know, do we pick projects? And it's just a matter of finding the projects that I think that, that, you know, are the qualifying projects. That's, that's the key here. And to make sure that, you know, those involved feel like they've, you know, been included and everybody, or everybody's been included, you know, it's not that it's just a certain, you know, it, a project in East Randolph versus a project in Randolph Center. You know, it's like, okay, do these benefit everybody in the community? That's that's the big concern here. And, and so, you know, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of things to take into consideration and, and they need to have long lasting effects, I think. Yes. 
And the difference from R3 is there's funding available for the projects we identify. Absolutely. So <laughs> and I also have to think there were some projects identified in R3 that have not been done yet or, or funded yet or, or gone through. I, I looked at that document. So, you know, both there and in the town plan, there's plenty of projects already i think we could we could just work with those but i, yeah, I, I think you're 100%, right we need to reach out to the community and figure out the best way to do that well that was a very thorough process and i have a right to be here and speak tonight trevor because at a at a uh um, bcr uh bcam meeting the night the public has a right to attend this meeting i'm not debating that and you're speaking now well you told me before that i was not a member so I didn't have a right to do you have something you want to talk to the committee about? I certainly do. Okay. You have so that was under public, Gary, that was under public comment. Okay. And you know, I, I don't want this to be, you know, go on for another half an hour, 45 minutes here. All right. So if you've got some stuff you'd like to share with us, I think, you know, put it in a document and get it off to us so we can consider it. I have been trying to do that for two months. Give me a chance, folks. I'm terribly frustrated. I have been trying to make a connection and through terrible processes that exist, I haven't been able to, and I'm not alone in the energy committee. And the energy well, the, committee- Well, the point, is, hold, whoa, is wait a minute here. Of okay. of information that is relevant. I'm sorry, but you know what? The energy committee needs to report to the select board, okay? This is not the energy committee's charge. Well, to you tell this. me how to report to the select board because I've tried. You get on the agenda, okay? You, well, you, well, I've given you. I, okay, we we're not going to take it up. I, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this right now. If you want to have this conversation, we're going to have it privately. Okay. Okay, we'll have it. I'm all done with it. Before. Okay. This is we're not relevant. The energy committee it's right very now. Very relevant, but we will talk privately. Okay. Well, I'm done with it. Okay, we're moving on. So, if there's no other business here, uh, we should need to set a date for the next meeting. Yeah, and I didn't know if you guys wanted to talk about a, getting on a regular calendar, too. Um, yeah, I think that'd be a good idea. Well, yeah, we, would, we've been I'd love to, but a little bit here and there, but... Let's not pick the first week of the month, okay? Because you're already filling my calendar <laughs> up pretty much. I'm four days a yeah. week already. So how about, you know, like second week, maybe Wednesday, Thursday? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to suggest. The second week of April, I think it's. Uh, well, Thursday will be a select board meeting. So, you know, Wednesday would be open. So when's April 13th is the Wednesday in two weeks. That, that would be better so before Easter, you know, um, before we get involved in Easter. I go away for Easter, but Wednesday, that Wednesday before Easter would be fine. I'm, I'm good for Wednesday, April 13th, if everybody else is as well. Does that work for everybody? I see Michael's got a thumbs up. Matt's good. Ramsey? Yeah, I can make it work. I have another meeting regularly on the second, third, and fourth uh, Wednesday, but I can adjust the timing on the second one. Okay. Jeff? Good. Yep. Works for me. Maria, you're good with that, Maria? Yeah. Mary? Yep. Okay. All right. So let's do that. Let's go for April 13th, 5.30. Yep. Great. All right. So motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. All right. I second. Second. Mary second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Motion Thanks. adjourned. Thank you very much. Very informative. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you in April. See you in April.